To finish up our discussion of electricity, we need to actually talk about electrical circuits. And this is where we get into the details of exactly how we construct electrical circuits, as it says, to power the devices that we need each day. So let's go ahead and get into this. So just first of all, just an introduction. There's some terms that you need to know that we haven't introduced before. On the right hand side, you see this picture of the battery that we used in the last section when we talked about electrical current. So remember in a battery, we've got work being done on electrons. They gain electrical energy here. And then they go through this wire because they spontaneously move from negative to positive and they use that electrical energy. So first of all, we use the word circuit as in circle. That's what circuit sounds like and that's what it means. We have to have a complete circuit, a complete pathway for current to flow from negative to positive, not only uh, within the battery, but also here. So again, notice electrons have to have a complete pathway to flow back around from the negative to the positive. If there's um, any break at all in that pathway, it doesn't work. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, again, like I said, this includes a battery that we've talked about before or some other power source to move the electrons back to negative again. This is part of the circuit. It's part of the pathway. This is a complete circuit. This is a working circuit. And when a, a, a circuit works, everything is connected. We call that a closed circuit. Everything's closed. And that may sound counterintuitive because we sometimes use the word closed to, to mean like inaccessible, inoperable. We typically, you know, maybe you have a negative connotation with that. But closed is good for a circuit because that means everything is connected. Everything is working. However, if any part of this circuit is broken, anything is disconnected, something is messed up, the device cannot operate. So if you look here on the top right side, let's say I take some scissors and I just cut the wire right there. Well, now the circuit is broken and it cannot operate. This light bulb then will go out. The light bulb is okay. It hasn't burned out or anything like that. It's fully operational, but the electrons cannot flow from the negative to the positive. There's no complete pathway for them to get there. So we call this an open circuit, right? Open circuit, again, maybe counterintuitive. For us, we sometimes use the word open in a good way. Open for circuits is bad. The circuit is inoperable if it is open. There's one other thing you need to know, and that's called a short circuit. So if we take away, let's, if we meld that wire back together again, this represents another wire that's uh, just a different connection. That's a pathway of lesser resistance that's provided for the current to bypass the, the device. Um, I've already told you before that devices have internal resistance. Actually, this light bulb has quite a bit of resistance. So when the electrons move from the negative back around to the positive, it's as if they see this point right here and they can know or feel or see that there's a smaller resistance pathway to get back to the positive. In other words, they can go to the positive party without going through that light bulb because they got to do a lot of work to go through the light bulb. Nobody wants to do that. That's called a short circuit. Short circuits are usually accidental. They're not usually intended. Um, now, again, notice that this circuit is still closed. This is not an open circuit. There's nothing that's broken here, but the device is not operational because Current takes the path of least resistance. And you might have heard that before. I want you to remember that. Electricity takes the path of least resistance. Now, it's a slight misnomer. It doesn't only take that path. These two green arrows are indicating that most of the current, the vast majority of the current, will go through this path right here. There will be just a little bit of current that will still flow through this light bulb because, as I said, that isn't a closed pathway. It's a, it's a complete connected pathway. But there's going to be so few electrons flowing through that because that's the path of highest resist resistance. Resistance and currents are, current are inversely related. Um, so we still have electrons passing through this light bulb. There's just not enough of them to light the light bulb. The current is not high enough. So this is called a closed circuit, and I'm going to demonstrate that for you now. Okay, so I've built a simple circuit here. There are two batteries, positive, negative side. Um, electrons flow from negative back to positive if we give them a pathway to do it. Simple light bulb that's going to light up. Not connected right now. If I connect it up, provide a pathway, now the circuit is closed. Open circuit, closed circuit. Everything's connected, everything good, light bulb lights up. Now, I'm talking about a short circuit here. In a short circuit, all we're going to do is provide a pathway of lesser, lesser resistance, which would be this wire, for the electrons to, again, realize the electrons just want to go from the negative side 
to the positive side. In this case, there's only one pathway for them to do it, and it happens to be through this light bulb, which is why the light bulb is lighting up. But if we give them a smaller pathway before the light bulb, let's say we connect this one here, and we connect the other end to the positive side, watch what happens. Well, now the light bulb went off, and you might go, oh, it's burned out. No, it's not burned out. It still works. It's just that now when this is connected, the electrons are still flowing. This is still a closed circuit. They're going through the yellow wire, but they're bypassing the light bulb and they're going through the black wire back around to the positive side. And actually, it's a much, much higher current because this wire has almost no resistance. There's a little bit, but not much. So again, the point is, there's still current flowing through the bulb. You can't see it because the bulb is not lighting up. And it's not lighting up because the current going through it is so incredibly low. Because electricity takes the path of least resistance, it gets here and it has a choice. It can either go through the bulb or through the black wire back around to the positive party and it goes through the black wire because that's definitely the pathway of least resistance. So that's called a short circuit. Okay, just a couple more things you need to know by way of introduction. We're going to draw some diagrams of circuits, and so we need to understand the symbols, Some just, just a few very simple symbols that we're going to use for circuits. Uh, a circuit diagram looks something like this. It might look complicated right now. Actually, we're not going to have any diagrams that are quite this complicated. I'm just going to use this one to give you the symbols. Uh, first symbol I want to talk about is these black lines, which represent wires, very simply. Conducting wires copper or aluminum uh, that allow current to flow from negative to positive and then through all of the resistors that uh, that we're going to use. Second, symbol is a switch. Now, switches are not always present in a circuit. When you draw your circuits, a switch is not a required part of it, but you can draw one if you want. This is what a switch would look like. And this symbol, you would see this simply in line somewhere on a wire, just like these other symbols. So it might be here, might be here, could be here. Um, open switch provides an open circuit. That's what you do when you're turning the light off. You're simply opening the circuit. Uh, and then closed switch allows electrons to flow. As you can imagine, there is a complete connected pathway here for electrons to flow through. Uh, that's what you're doing when you're turning a light switch on. You're closing the circuit. Um, I wouldn't say that, though, because it might sound a little weird. Like, when you're turning the lights on, don't say, hey, somebody go close the circuit. Nobody's going to know what you're talking about. Uh, third is the battery. Now, batteries look a little bit different sometimes. This is actually technically a two-cell battery, but you can see the combination of the long line and the short line is what I'm talking about. This is a simpler battery that I'm going to draw most of the time. You need to know that the, the shorter line on the battery symbol is the negative terminal. The longer line on the battery represents the positive terminal. Again, just a symbol that we draw. All right. And so, again, if you can just plug that in right there, imagine that it's in line with that wire. That's what a battery would look like. And last but not least, these little squiggly lines, we use those symbols to represent a resistor or a device. So, devices like light bulbs, heaters, anything that we're going to actually put on this circuit to make it run. And then resistors also. I've told you about resistors before when we talked about resistance. Resistors simply apply resistance. So the point is, when we're doing these, for our purposes here, now there are other people that use different symbols for light bulbs and other things, and they get a little more complicated. We're just going to make it easy, keep it easy. These are just going to be basic resistances because it's the resistance of those things that we're going to really care about, not really exactly what they do. So those are the basic symbols that we're going to use when we start talking about circuits.